Welcome, friends. This is Peter Herbeck. I hope you're at peace in Christ. Um, I just have something simple uh, and brief that I'd like to share today. I began reading just the last few days, kind of tracking the whole monkeypox reality that's emerging in parts of the world today. And I was reading uh, the New a New York Times article about it and just some data from it that I wanted to communicate what they're seeing and what its origin and who is it mostly affecting. And it says this, men who have sex with men are at the highest risk of infection right now from monkeypox, according to the World Health Organization. It's like different kinds of pox, you know, like smallpox, and it has blisters on different parts of the body. Uh, it's painful, it's difficult, uh, and, it, it, and it's related to behavior. Now listen to this. About 99% of cases are among men, and at least 95% of those patients are men who have sex with men, according to the World Health organization. 95%. 99% of people who are getting this are men. 95% are men who have sex with men. All right. This thing is so politically charged, it reminds me of research I did back in the 90s around the AIDS issue. And it was so politicized and from the beginning I said, no, this is affecting everybody and everybody we equally. And um, people are trying to say the same thing about this. I remember once reading on the, uh, set, at the Center for Disease Control website in the 90s, and a report had come out. Um, you know, it already started back in the, in the 80s, but the report at that time said that uh, what they were seeing across the country and across the world was that 62% um, of the new cases of AIDS came from 2% of the population. They, they were the ones who were getting it, 2% of the population, right? And then at that point, the CDC had the courage to talk about what it was. I don't know if they still do it because I haven't been on it for a long time. And what they said was, and it's the result of the frequency of anonymous sex and the nature of the sex that's being engaged in. Right? And I don't want to get into all the gory details of what was happening, but it had to do with um, many multiple part, many, many anonymous partners and of different kinds and anal sex, oh, that's all I'll say. And all that that means, and the potential harm that's there. And so there was so much pressure at the time for the CDC and political pressure to just don't talk about it that way, you know? Don't bring it up, because they're afraid that uh, people are gonna think badly um, and maybe, um, yeah, make life difficult for homosexual men in this case. That's the 2% of the people who were, who were experiencing it at that time. Now here's another outbreak of another disease. And people are trying to say, oh, everybody's got to get shot. Everybody, we should all get vaccinated from this. Guess what? If you live a chaste life and you live a monogamous life in a healthy marriage between a man and woman, you're not going to get this. It's not going to happen, right? It's not, it's not like, like COVID-19. It's behavior related. And I'm not bringing this up to attack homosexual men. In fact, I want to do the opposite. I want to make an appeal, a, appeal, a genuine appeal from my heart because I was reading this stuff. It just broke my heart. There's a lot of pain here. There's a lot of deep confusion and woundedness and slavery here. And I just want to say this. Now, from the bottom of my heart, if there's a men who are listening who fit this category, I just want you to know that God loves you. God sent his son for you, just like he sent his son for every one of us. Every single human being is in a battle against sin. Every single human being needs to be saved by Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him would not die, but would have everlasting life. God wants you and me, he wants our life to flourish. But our lives can't flourish if we live outside God's will. God's not your enemy. God doesn't hate you. I don't hate you. Christian people who love God don't hate you, right? But we want to, I want to today, I'll just speak for myself. I want to speak the truth that was spoken to my life at one point. 
what I found to be love. I didn't like it at the beginning, but to speak the truth in love, that Jesus Christ extends his hand to you and he wants to help you. And he wants to help bring you out of a lifestyle and a way of living that's profoundly harming you here in this case bodily, but also spiritually. And he wants to bring you to repentance. Uh, and he wants to bring you into the full life that he has for you here on earth. Profound dignity, joy, happiness, integrity of life, right? Whole sense of wholeness. And then he wants you to be with him and the Father forever in heaven. But for you to get there is the same path that all of us have to make. I had to make. I had to repent of my sin. I had to say, you know, I'm making decisions about what I'm doing with my body. I'm making decisions with other areas of my life that are really at the root of why my life wasn't flourishing at the time. Why I keep running into these things. And I could get all kinds of people to cheerlead for me and agree with me. But most people did that because they, they wanted me to like them. And that I do the same kind of thing. We do that, right? We don't want to bring the truth to people because, oh, gee, we don't want someone to think badly of us. That's cowardice. That's not love. That's not love. Friend, brothers, the, the, the situation is so critical. Even in this terrible thing that you may be experiencing or friends of yours may be experiencing, God is speaking to you. Eternity is in the balance. It is for every human being in different ways. And it is for you too. Turn your heart to Christ. He's right there. He loves you. He's not going to say, yeah, I love you so much. Keep doing what you're doing. He's going to say, no, I love you, so come. Turn. That's what repentance means. Turn away from what's harming you. Turn to the Lord. And you know, St. Francis said it's so beautiful. So what St. Francis did is he often knelt before the crucifix and he would just look up at it. This beautiful saint. Uh, and he'd say, God, who are you and who am I? You tell me who I am. I receive my identity from you. You made me. And my heart, like it says in John chapter 3, that even though God's offer of salvation is being given, men prefer darkness rather than light because our deeds are sinful. That's not just you. That's all of us, right? That's the human condition, and you're in it. And if you have all kinds of people cheerleading you, no, just double down on all that stuff. They're not your friend. They don't love you. They may be just as enslaved as you are. The only place we're going to find the truth is in God himself, in the offer of salvation that he gives to his son. You were made for glory. You were made to live with God and be with God forever in his love. And right now, like all of us, you're experiencing consequences of bad decisions, bad behavior, stuff that's not healthy, that will never allow you to flourish. Turn to God. Now, you might be afraid to. Well, is it going to ruin my whole life if I turn? Where am I going to go? I don't, you know, you maybe had bad experiences with Christians in the past or whatever. Don't, don't worry about that. Just say, in God I trust. I'm going to go to the Lord. I'm going to cry out to him in my pain. And he's going to come because he's the rescuer. Because he loves you. And he's going to lead you to eternal glory if you say yes to him. If you don't, just like me or anybody else, you're going to be eternally separated from God. Don't let any false religious teacher, whatever, don't let them lie to you. Just read God's word. It's in there. Read the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read the teaching of the apostles and the saints and follow beautiful people like St. Francis. They'll teach you. I'm saying this, friend, because I love you. Because the love of God is in my heart. Right? I know pain. I know the result of bad decisions that I grew up with in my own life. But I also know the way to freedom forgiveness, joy, the self-hatred goes away, the shame goes away, and God makes all things new, and that's what he wants to do for you. God love you, my friend, and maybe i just end, you know, I've never done this, maybe I'll just end, end with a, a prayer here, and if you'd like to, you can pray with me. I'm just going to pray this, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come and to save me. I acknowledge my sin and the, decision that I've, the decisions I've made that have brought me to where I am. Lord, I want to be free. I want everything that you want for me. Forgive me from, of my sins and lead me to glory. Lead me to you. 
lead me to the love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God love you.